Welcome back to Learn with MedNuggets. In this video, we will teach you how to differentiate two neuromuscular junction disorders, myasthenia gravis and Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome. Both myasthenia gravis and Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome are acquired autoimmune diseases characterized by defective neuromuscular transmission. However, these two diseases work on different parts of the neuron and therefore produce different effects. Myasthenia gravis produces antibodies against the postsynaptic membrane, while Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome produces antibodies against the presynaptic membrane. The antibodies produced in myasthenia gravis go and bind to the acetylcholine receptors, preventing acetylcholine from binding to its receptors and triggering muscle contraction. However, the antibodies produced in Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome work a bit differently. They bind to the presynaptic voltage-gated calcium channels instead and prevents the release of acetylcholine because remember, Calcium triggers acetylcholine release, right? So now we know where this disease occurs and how it causes damage to our body. Next, let's move on to the clinical presentation of these two diseases. Myasthenia gravis starts at ice and moves downwards. In more than half of the people who develop myasthenia gravis, their first symptoms affect the eyes. The most common feature is ptosis, which means drooping of eyelids. Diplopia occurs in around 70% of patients. Diplopia refers to double vision. Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome starts at the proximal lower limb muscles and moves upwards. In myasthenia gravis, muscle weakness increases with repetitive movements. But in Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome, it improves with repetitive motion. In myasthenia gravis, your deep tendon reflexes are not affected. Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome leads to absent deep tendon reflexes. Myasthenia gravis does not cause autonomic disturbances, but Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome can lead to autonomic dysfunction such as dry mouth and impotence. It's important to do a CT chest to check for any thymic hyperplasia or thymic gland tumours in myasthenia gravis patients as two-thirds of young people with myasthenia gravis have thymic hyperplasia and about 1 in 10 have thymomas. Similarly, it's important to do a CT chest or X-ray for Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome as it's strongly associated with small cell lung carcinoma. Now let's move on to the treatment of these two conditions. If the disease is due to a thymic mass or a lung cancer, resect it or treat the cancer. You can treat myasthenia gravis with anticholinesterase therapies like pyridostigbine, immunosuppressants like corticosteroids and acetyoprine, and immunomodulatory agents such as IVIG and plasmapheresis. Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome can be treated with drugs like amifampridine and pyridostigmine to improve muscle strength and immunosuppressants and immunomodulatory agents just like we did in the treatment of myasthenia gravis. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.